the simple gas laws. So there's four basic properties of gases. Um, the pressure, the pointer, pressure is abbreviated with a capital P. The volume is important. We measure that with, uh, indicate that with capital V. The temperature, capital T. And then we talk about the amount of gas in terms of how many moles. What and that's abbreviated R N. Pardon me? Oh, R? Uh, we'll talk about that. R is a constant. And so these properties are interrelated. If you change the volume, then something else is going to have to change. And the simple gas laws describe the interrelationship between pairs of these properties. Remember, a law says this is what happens. It doesn't explain why, but it says if you double this, that will double. Or if you cut this in half, that will double. Things like that. And that's what the simple gas laws do. So Boyle. Robert Boyle lived back in the 1600s, okay, before our country became a country. And he studied gases. And he used a J-shaped tube to measure the volume of a sample of gas at different pressures. And so he's using this idea of the manometer with the different levels. And so he's got a gas in here. He's got this sealed off. And there's a pressure difference in, and we can tell that from the difference in the columns of mercury. You can increase the pressure on that gas by pouring more mercury into this side. And the gas is going to get squeezed together. The volume of the gas went down when the pressure went up. So he observed an inverse relationship. If you increase the pressure, the volume goes down. If you decrease the pressure, the volume goes up. That's inverse. And this is the type of graph that you can get from this sort of data. We're changing the pressure, so that's graphed on the x-axis. And we see that you know, we start at this pressure with a volume of you know, 400, maybe 20, 425 <coughs> liters of gas. And as we increase the pressure measured in millimeters of mercury, the volume decreases. So Boyle's law is that the volume is proportional to 1 over the pressure. That's the inverse relationship. This um, is true if the temperature is kept constant and if the amount of gas is kept constant. If you're adding more gas or letting gas out, then this isn't going to be true anymore. If you're letting the temperature change, it's not going to be true. So if we graph volume versus pressure, we get a curved line. That's this one. Oh. So these are graphs I made up. So here we see volume decreasing as pressure increases. And we get this curve. If we graph the volume versus 1 over the pressure, then the data gives us a beautiful straight line. <coughs> and we like straight lines because we can have an equation for the line and we can have an equation that describes the relationship between volume and pressure. That relationship is this. The pressure times the volume is equal to some constant. Well, that constant is going to change for every different situation. But the relationship that's useful is this one, P1V1 equals P2V2. So the volume at pressure 1 is equal to a different volume at pressure 2, and we can predict what it is. As the volume of a gas sample is decreased, here we see um, a sample of gas in this container with a movable lid. Here it's got one kilogram weight on top of it. If we double that, we're doubling the pressure. We're squishing it together. That causes the volume to be cut in half. So here we have one liter at one atmosphere of pressure. And here at two atmospheres of pressure, we have half a liter. The pressure times the volume is equal to the pressure times the volume. Boyle's law is important in scuba diving. For every 10, cent, 10 meters of depth that you go down, you experience approximately one additional atmosphere of pressure. 
and that's pretty significant, doubling the pressure. So at 20 meters, you've gone down 10 meters twice. So you've got an additional two atmospheres. You're going to have approximately three atmospheres of pressure on you. That's going to make it very difficult to breathe because your muscles have to expand against that pressure. If you, hold, if you go down deep like that and hold your breath and go up to the surface quickly, now the outside pressure is decreasing as you're rising. The pressure inside of your lungs is still three atmospheres, and it's going to cause your lungs to expand. And so if you continued to hold your breath, your lungs would probably explode or spring a very, very fatal leak, right? So scuba divers are taught to always exhale when they're rising. Never hold your breath. There's a reason that in order to go scuba diving, you have to take all kinds of classes and stuff. Because there's some things, some complicated things, that you need to thoroughly understand or you're going to kill yourself. The pressure is decreasing by a factor of three. That means the volume will increase by a factor of three. Your lungs were not designed to triple in volume. That's not going to be good. Let's stop there.